What is going on guys, Pansy here and welcome to part 3 of my ultimate hunting guide. In this video we are going over the money making portion of hunting. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about making cash with hunting. If you haven't seen part 1 and 2, links are in the description down below. Part 1 goes over all the basics, class selection, gear, buffs, and mechanics. Part 2 goes over the leveling portion so you can get to Guru 1 and start focusing on money or keep leveling. Players always ask me, is it worth getting into hunting? Do you still make money? Is it overdone? The answer is yes, you can still make money. It's not overdone, but there are some regions which the amount of money you're making per hour is not as high as others. For example, EU has a lot more life skillers and they're a lot more gung-ho when it comes to life skilling. So their prices and their market and money per hour is a bit less than NA. So make sure you do research into your own market. I'll show you exactly how to do all that and then make your decision if you are looking to invest into life skill gear and going into hunting. But just as examples, at 1200 mastery on NA, you can make over 500 to 550 mil an hour. And if you were to do a few additional steps, which I'll talk about in this video, that could be over six to 700 mil an hour. Then look at 1500 mastery, you make over six to 700 mil an hour. And if you did additional work, you know, even higher. And finally, at like 1700 mastery, where my base mastery is at, that's over 700 to 750 mil an hour. And at 2K mastery, that's over 800 to 850 mil an hour. So long story short, yes, it is definitely worth doing. It's definitely lucrative and it is much less effort than grinding. When you're grinding, you're putting in a lot more APM. When you're hunting, it's a lot more chill, but you can be sweaty with it. But even at the sweatiest hunting gets, it's still not grinding, okay? In this video, make sure you watch everything from start to finish because if you start skipping around and you're new to hunting, you might miss some important points as they all tie in together. So be sure to take your time with this and save the video somewhere, keep coming back to it. Whenever you're picking up a new life skill or learning something new in video, it does take time to absorb all of it. So as a new player, you don't have to know all of this right off the bat, but eventually you'll understand it and it does become helpful. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is what you get from hunting, all the items and all the drops you get from hunting. And I'm just going to explain what those are for and everything. So you're familiar with what you're receiving when you're out hunting. And after that, we're going to look at the hunting calculator, how to use that. That is the best resource for hunting hands down. I'm going to show you everything over there and then we'll go into a few additional activities that you need to do in order to maximize your income. And finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks that can help you while hunting. Those are really important, guys, because the more kills per hour you get and the more efficiently you play, the more money you're going to be making while hunting. So make sure you check those out as well. But before we get started with the actual video, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe if you find this video helpful. I really appreciate it. Check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy where I live stream. And finally, there's an event going on right now at the time of releasing this video where you can support your favorite content creator when you're buying A coins on the website for Pearl Abyss. Uh, you can use code Pansy to support me. I'd really appreciate it. But don't feel the need to swipe to just support me. The best thing to do to support me is always going to be to share my videos with your friends and on Discord. Section 1, The Loot. All right, guys, here's a quick explanation of all the loot that you can get while hunting. While it differs from mob to mob, the general items are in the similar tiers and you'll see the similarities after I explain it. So there's a bunch of trash loot that you're getting, which you can convert into more money by doing other activities. For example, sharp horn, intact horn and cracked horn. These are all the same item in different tiers. Then you have sharp tooth, intact tooth and cracked tooth. These are also in the same tier. Then you have Supreme Hide, Usable Hide, and Damage Hide. So these three uh, tiers of items are sort of tied together. So you can use them to craft uh, handcraft items, which you can just, uh, you know, turn in for trading and convert them into silver by making those. And you can do that by unlocking any handcraft workshops and, and at level one, you'll be able to make these items. So for the items that you're getting from hunting the Narcion mobs, that is the shabby horn decorations and the uh, horn decoration, the exquisite horn decoration, then you have the cracked tooth bracelet and its tears. So these items can be created by using those damaged hides and cracked horns and the respective tiers of them. Same for the cracked tooth bracelet. So by using these workshops, you can convert those items into cash. But also, Supreme Hide, uh, Usable Hide, and uh, Damage Hide, they have other uses. 
So whenever you're hunting mobs, you have a chance of getting a stuffed item. For example, a stuffed head or, you know, in this case, a stuffed verdure buck is what I'm using. You can make this into a higher variance of itself so you can sell it for more money. For example, I can show you on the marketplace. So if you look at the stuffed verdure buck, the base price is 11 mil. And then once you make it into an artisan stuffed buck, it goes up to 14. Master stuffed buck, it's 37. And then there's the Artisan Special and the Master Special variant. So the difference here is the buff duration is much higher. So it triples it. Instead of being a one hour buff, it becomes a three hour buff. And for other ones, like for example, the dough, it's really valuable. See how pricey these are? That's 20 accuracy for three hours with 10 uses. That is insane. That's 30 hours of 20 more accuracy. So these are very valuable. Now, not all the heads are valuable. For example, Rhino heads are pretty dog. So uh, you just have to keep that in mind and whenever you're thinking about turning these into the master special variants you might not want to do it for like the rhinos but for the doe and the buck they are worth it for shadow line heads they're worth it now how do you do that so if you go to your crafting notes you'll see this directly here so if you search for doe or buck or whichever item you're trying to turn in they all require the same items to process to the master special variant or the artisan special variant. It's basically you take the base version and then you process it with 10 thornwood sap, 10 delosia powder, and one breath of narcian. You do that by going into manufacturing and clicking it and putting in the respective items. So for the delosia powder, you get it by grinding uh, delosia flowers, which you can gather throughout narcian. They're pretty easy to get. And for the breath of narcian, you get them for random drops while hunting which is pretty uh, easy to stack up as well uh, in relation to the number of heads you're getting from hunting. So I never had any issue with not having enough breath of Narcian. And for Thornwood Sap, how you get it is Thornwood Forest Node. So you put a worker here and get them lumbering and you'll get Thornwood Sap. So I use Old Wisdom Tree for this and it stacks up pretty decently. You don't need too many of them because you only need 10 for each head. So uh, I have quite a few of those. Now let's look at the other drops from the mob. So for example, when I'm hunting deer, I get deer meat, deer blood, and deer hide. And of course you get the respective um, stuffed doe or the stuffed buck, the animal that you're hunting. And you also get firehorn. So firehorn is also used to make um, the stuffed uh, variants to the higher level. So for example, if you have a green variant and you're turning it into a blue variant, then you need to have the green variant plus firehorn plus damaged hide. If you're making it into the master variant, then you need the blue variant, then three Firehorn, then the usable hide. So it's one higher tier. So you're not going to be using the Supreme Hide to make any of these stuffed uh, animals into their final tier or anything. These can be used in your workshops for those items I showed you earlier. So getting meat is probably the most valuable thing from hunting. So for example, deer meat, um, lion meat and whatever. And the best thing to do with this is to cook with it and, you know, make it into more money and then you sell it. But if you want to dump it, you can just uh, keep an eye on the prices. They do fluctuate quite often. Then same thing for your, the blood and for the deer hide. So for any of the hides you get, you can process this into the higher variant. So like, for example, deer hide can be turned into soft hide and fine soft hide and fine soft hide uh, does sell for quite a bit. And later you can turn that fine soft hide into supreme soft hide if you want, but you need leather glaze in order to do that. And I don't know if it's profitable depending on your region. So, you know, you could just turn it into fine soft hide and sell it or use it for something else. Then you have the enhancing mats. You get black gem fragments, black gems, and concentrated magical black gems. So any of these enhancing mats or uh, the breath of Narcian, these can drop in turns of one, two, three, or four at a time, depending on your mastery level. The higher the mastery, the um, more items it drops at once like for example i got like four sharps i got four capras and those kind of things so just keep that in mind um if you're getting less than what you see in other videos then that's because your mastery level is lower and finally you also get the floras uh light stones as well as artifacts so while hunting you can get the life skill mastery life skill xp hunting mastery and hunting xp and you definitely want to use the hunting mastery ones for your hunting because maximizing mastery is key for more money and yeah i think that about covers everything here for the drops and one final thing i forgot to mention is if you get excess of these artifacts you can use simple alchemy on them to turn them into purified light stones then you can sell these directly on the marketplace or you can gamba just hit l go to simple alchemy toss that in and hit start Section 2, 
the hunting calculator. When it comes to understanding money making with hunting, the best thing you can do is learn how to use GPW's hunting calculator. Link will be in the description down below. And the first thing you want to do as soon as you open this is to make a copy by clicking file and hit make a copy. And then you'll be able to edit the fields here. So you see some of these fields are blue. These are the only ones you want to edit. You don't want to edit anything else as you might accidentally break the calculator. So let's get started here. So I'm going to go over all of the settings that you can adjust and starting with the region. Hit your region here. It'll automatically update the prices depending on which region you're in. Also, guys, quick note, you can change the region tab up here and see the difference in how much money you're making compared to other regions if you want to find out. Then you have the hunting mastery. Select your hunting mastery bracket. This goes in steps of 50. So pick the one that you just crossed. So so for example, if you're 1710, you pick 1700. Then you have the hedgehog tier. This definitely affects how much money you get out of hunting. I have a tier four, so I'll select that. Then your trade level, your trade distance. Then you have kills per hour. I generally keep it at standard, or you can select high end later on once you're really good at a rotation and experienced. But I just keep it at standard for now. Then for headcrafts, this is turning those stuffed heads you get while hunting into the higher variants. So for example, Master Special. I always make my stuff heads into Master Special. So I'll go ahead and click that. Then select your gathering drop rate, hit your item drop rate, then how many energy pots you're consuming per hour. So what this will do is that it'll help you calculate how much time you're spending at a grind spot, how much money you can make during that time. So basically, let's say you're chugging six energy pots an hour. So that means, you know, in these spots, you'll have you'll never run out of energy. Then if you're consuming none, you know, you won't be able to stay at any spot indefinitely, but it'll give you an approximate time on how much time you can expect to be there for. Then coming back to the settings, you have the combo seal blessing and the villa buffs. Uh, tick them if you have it. Then the value pack and your family fame. So we got the last tier, so we selected the 1.5%. Now you see the information here. This is an overview, which will compare all of the spots available that are worth hunting at. So you have the Feather Wolves, Shadow Wolves, Grass Rhinos, you have Shadow Lions, Verdure Bucks, Frost Wolves, and Giant Lions. So Verdure Bucks also includes the Does, just remember that's just the Verdure Deer. And then you have the different columns. So Kills Per Hour is by default set when you select either Standard or High End. That is these values. If you want to put your custom values, you can. Then you have Energy Per Hour. This is how much energy you're consuming per one hour of efficient hunting with the default set here then you have the amount of meat per hour the main meat which drops at these grind locations how much meat you can expect in one hour of hunting then the amount of xp as you saw here grass rhino stands tall above everything else uh, nothing even close to it except maybe shadow lines but even that's kind of far away then the gathering xp per hour you get from over here you'll see at some spots you get a lot more gathering xp than others then the amount of money per hour with energy potions and without energy potions. Since over here I said I'm consuming zero per hour, there's no difference. But if I was to set, let's say I consume three per hour, the amount of money you consume by using those energy pots is subtracted here. Then you have energy per hour, the time you spend and can spend at a grind spot, and how long it takes to dump your energy if you weren't going to use these pots. And that about summarizes everything here. And if you need any help on the grind rotations, there are really handy guides over here where you can go through for each of the spots, except it's like giant lines. And then you have the other tabs, which we'll go into. So the next tab, which is worth looking at, is the maps tab. If you're wondering where any of the locations or grind spots are, this will tell you exactly where they are. And they highlighted it and labeled it. And if this uh, tab isn't loading the pictures, just hit refresh on your browser. And yeah, it's a pretty handy resource. Then you have the XP calculator. If you want to see how long it takes you to get from one point to another, let's say from beginner one to uh, guru one. If you enter all of your information here, all your mastery and stuff and your hedgehog level and everything, uh, it'll give you all the, the total amount of time over here. Now, depending on the buffs, this will also adjust everything. So. This is pretty nice to have and just something to look at to give you an approximate idea on how to get how long it's going to take you to get to one point 
it's really not that hard to get to guru one hunting like honestly uh getting to guru one is pretty chill all you have to do is make sure you have the right xp buffs and stuff and you can knock that out in a few days pretty easily now this is 15 hours without the additional buffs let's say there's a 50% or 100% life skill XP event going on and you also use your tent buff that considerably cuts it down so there's a lot of buffs here you know pick whichever ones you have available and yeah then you have a tab for the classes this tab will explain all of the passive effects which help you while hunting so they also have the tier for them so for example here awakening striker and awakening mystic are s minus Whereas Succession Striker has 25% crit is considered S+. Plus. Then Mystic is 20% crit with 2% attack speed is considered S tier. So yeah, you can see all the different passives uh, you can get here. And this will give you a good idea of what classes are decent for hunting. And then finally, you have different tabs for each of the hunting spots. For this example, we'll go ahead and use the Verdure Buck tab. And in this tab is a breakdown of how much meat you can expect to be getting per hour. And let's just go and adjust our mastery to something like 1200. So at 1200 mastery, if we're making all the heads into master special variants, then you can see this is the expected amount of cash over a longer period of time. But let's say you're not crafting the heads into anything, and then you can expect about this much cash. If you go to the tab, you'll see a breakdown of how much meat you should be expecting to get when you're playing efficiently. So you should be getting around 18,000 meat. And these are the approximate number of other loot that you should be expecting to get. And this is just a nice breakdown and this will help you see what kind of items you're getting and where you're getting them. So if you want to focus on one specific type of item, you can go ahead and see the different tabs and the spots around here and see how many you get. For example, if you want more enhancement mats, you can see that rhinos and uh, shadow lions will drop them a lot more per hour than for deer bucks but yeah overall this is pretty handy to know uh, when it comes to the rotation settings you can leave these as blank so downgrading the hides is basically you're going to be downgrading the hides that you get so you can craft green trade items instead that increases your money a little bit but i never did it so i can't really talk too much about it for the ignore bosses this is an older functionality there was a reason why they included it but it's not really required for us so you can just leave that blank and then these two settings are for the buckheads and the dough heads. So the buckheads are worth considerably less than the dough heads, but they're still worth decent money. So here, in case you weren't going to uh, make everything into master special variant, you're on only going to do that for the doughs. Uh, you can set it as blank here, and then you can set this to master special. But overall, this is a pretty handy breakdown of the amount of items that you should be expecting to get. This will tell you are you really playing efficiently or not? And if you need to work on getting more kills per hour uh, for your mastery. For the most part, I would treat this hunting calculator as gospel. It's pretty damn accurate. I've tested it out myself and it's, it's on point for a lot of things. And the only variables are usually me as a player and my skill level and my efficiency while playing. Section three, multiply your income. When it comes to life skilling in BDO, there are three facets to life skilling. One is the generation of material. Two is the consumer. The consumer is the one who's buying it and is on the other end of the marketplace. But the step that comes in between is called the transformation. So the transformation is basically someone getting those materials either by themselves or buying it off the marketplace. They then transform it into higher forms and sell it for more profit. That is cooking or alchemy. By utilizing cooking and alchemy, you can actually make more money out of the time that you spend hunting by utilizing your zero time. Zero time is time when you're not actually going to be playing actively. You're busy doing something else. You're doing your homework. You're spending time with the family, watching TV, having dinner. All that time that you're not going to be playing BDO, you could leave your character for cooking. Me personally, I work from home, so you know I can get three to four hours a day cooking during work where you know i'm taking a break i can come to the computer and just in 10 seconds just set up my cooking again and walk away whatever the situation is utilizing that zero time to transform your materials is going to yield more money for the time you spend hunting now in theory that's all easy to understand right you got the material you can either sell it and get the money now or you can transform it spend a little bit of extra time or afk time and get more money out of it that's easy but now you might be wondering, well, how do we do it? What do we do with the material we get from hunting? 
Well, let's look at the enhancement mats. Transforming those enhancement mats into their higher forms is actually a decent way to get more out of it. For example, concentrated magical black gems, they're at peak price. When they're at peak price, you know, the way the peak prices for the hards and sharp are set, it's usually profitable to just transform them into concentrated magical black gems and sell them. You know, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Then when it comes to the meat, to the blood, you can do alchemy or cooking. Usually cooking is going to be the way to go because the mats that we get are really good for cooking from hunting. So now I'm not really experienced with alchemy, so I'm not going to talk about it. I won't be speaking from experience and I wouldn't do you guys justice, but at least from the cooking side, I can tell you a little bit there. So the type of meat you get while hunting is either going to be red meat or lion meat. Now red meat is very easy to acquire in Narcion and it's interchangeable with like rhino meat, wolf meat, deer meat. And this is a really good example to go through. So let's say you're hunting a lot of rhinos or deer and you have a lot of red meat. How do you transform that into a higher form? So for this example, I'll show you guys Balanos meals. Now as a market cook, Balanos meals might be like super meme, but as a hunter, these can actually come through really clutch because I personally love making these for my Imperial Guru boxes. Imperial Guru boxes, you know, are things that I consume on a daily basis, like 200 a day. That translates to thousands of Balanos meals a day. So having a supply of these are really good. Since I do a lot of deer hunting, this is the way to go for me because when you look at cheese graten, it has grilled sausage and red sauce. Both of these will consume red meat. Let me change that there. And then you have meat croquet. That's also red meat. Then the only other bottleneck item is going to be fish, which you can get from your nodes quite easily. So by hunting, you could pretty much supply all the bottleneck items that you need for Balanos meals quite easily. That's why you see me cooking like hundreds of thousands of these and still keep going. Because this is one way that I'm transforming deer meat, which is worth like 19 something K, into something more. And this is all time that I'm spending not playing the game, AFKing and utilizing that zero time. When it comes to deer blood, for example, you can use that to make dark pudding. Dark pudding is also pretty profitable and sometimes sells for really good money. So while you're hunting, say deer, you get a lot of deer meat. You can turn that into Balanos stuff. Then you get deer blood, which can be used to make dark pudding. So, so these are just two examples on how to turn what you get while hunting into a higher form. Now, of course, in addition to the enhancement mats and your cooking and alchemy, there's also one more portion to it, that is the stuffed heads. So as I explained earlier in the video, you turn them into the master special variant. I feel like you should never be selling stuffed heads on their own. Now that's only for the heads that are actually worth something like the Verdure Doe, the Verdure Buck, the Shadow Lion heads. Obviously the Rhino ones are flooded on the market and aren't worth anything. So never go into loss to turn into Master Special variants, okay? There could be time in your marketplace where Breath of Narcion is very expensive or not worth buying or not available. In those situations, just wait, just sit on them. As you get the mats to transform them into the Master Special variants in the future, do it then and sell them. But just keep these in mind. These are ways that you can maximize how much money you're getting out of hunting and transform your initial loot into something more. While you can go ahead and immediately liquidate everything you get and get some quick cash, that's fine. If you don't want to do cooking or alchemy and you don't ever have that set up, you don't want to even go down that route okay that's fine you can liquidate but if you are looking to be a life skiller we think much further ahead we prepare our storages with mats and materials whenever the market is fluctuating and the prices are low we hoard up a lot of items so over time we're building a system for ourselves where we're able to make consistent and decent money over long periods of times and get rich in the long run Section 4, Grind Spots and Rotations. Alright, let's start off with the first spot. The best place to hunt Verdure Deer. As you saw on the spreadsheet earlier, they make bank money. So this is a great spot. They drop meat, which is red meat. They drop blood, which, can, which you can use to cook dark pudding. And they drop really valuable stuffed heads. So like, all around, it's really nice. However, the drop rate for 
the enhancement mats are a bit less than other spots so keep that in mind in case you're trying to you know fund your own gambling addiction or something but overall this is a great spot and this is the location where you can find them and this is the location where you can find them this is directly south of salinar pond that's a node over here that is directly uh, northwest of odraxia so the great thing about salinar pond is i'm going to give you guys a little secret so this entire area is a safe zone you can see that i my name is blue over here right unfortunately the only downside here is if you need to repair you need to come outside and drop your tent like somewhere around here or you can drop it a bit bit on the southern side around here but overall um those are the that's the only drawback to it but because this is a safe spot you can actually go on arsha and grind here now i don't know if the server drop rate buff affects the drop rate of the quest as well as the spawn rate of the narcian bosses i think it does i don't i don't see why it shouldn't so you know that should help you guys a bit there it's probably a marginal difference i really wouldn't try to wait it out to get a spot on arsha specifically but it's just something to keep in mind now one more tip for farming the verdure deer and verdure box is you're gonna need to probably turn your graphics down right now we're playing on ultra mode now if i kill the deer and if i kill a few of these uh, i'll show you guys what happens like because the graphics are so nice and it puts so much detail into like the grass and stuff you can't really see the bodies all, all too easily i can see it right now because i only killed a few but normally i kill everything in sight and then i go running around just butchering them so if i killed like 10 15 of them and then i'm trying to go around uh remembering the spots i might miss a few of them so for that reason, unfortunately, whenever I'm doing Verdure Deer, I always turn my graphics down to very low just so I can see the bodies clearly in the grass. And I really hate doing that because I hate playing on Optimal, but here's a comparison. <laughs> unfortunately, that's the case. Uh, you can play around with it depending on your, your graphic settings and how you and which options you use. You might be able to see it better uh, in different settings, but... Yeah, for the most part, I can't play Remastered or Ultra when I'm hunting over here. It always makes me uh, miss a few because I just can't see them. Now, this is very high and I can't see it kind of, but, you know, it's still easy to miss them at times. So, you know, turn turn down the graphics if you're having issues as well. All right. The second spot I want to go over is Shadow Lions. I'll put on screen a more detailed map with all the spawn locations but generally it's right north of the Narcion node. Now there are four packs around here spread out and I'll show you each of those. Usually I just do three packs that are closest to each other as the final pack is a bit more spread out. So this is more convenient, but if you're ever in a situation where you're over clearing three packs, you can easily extend to the fourth pack. There are a few more lions on the east side of the river, but they're not as convenient to kill and to farm as they're fewer in number and you can't really extend as easily. All right, here we are right here north of the Narcian node. This is the first pack right here. There's three lions, one, two, and three. And after you kill these, you can come east and you'll see three right behind this thing right here and then after that you can come up north and you'll have three more around these rocks and then you can return to the first pack now in the case that you do over clear after the second pack over here you can go towards the river down here now here they're a bit more spread out there's one here one here and one right here so you can kill that and then come up over to the rocks, kill these, and then head back to the first spot. Now, if you get the random quest drop, a bonus quest for panic horses, uh, you can come over here for the shadow wolves that are directly north of this area and finish off your 10 kills here and get the buff. Killing shadow lions isn't too difficult. There's only one notable mechanic they have and it's their roar skill. So I'll let him hit me a few times. And when he jumps back like that, he jumps back and does that roar. It staggers you and puts a bleeding dot on you. So 
you want to watch out for that. You want you want to always dodge it. And this is also good for us in terms of DPS because he stands still and you can get quite a few shots with back attacks in. And it really helps with the DPS if you capitalize on those. Other than that, there's nothing major here with Shadow Lions. They're pretty straightforward. Now for Shadow Wolves, the best spot is going to be directly northeast of the Narcian spot. As you can see, the marker on my map over here for the quest. So this small pack is basically there just so you can go do your quest really quickly and not have to run all the way here. But otherwise, this is going to be the best spot. There's a bunch of packs here and it's really comfortable to go and pull all of them. All you really want to do here is aggro 10 of them, then come back to the first point where you aggro just so you don't keep pulling mobs while you're uh, in between gathering and stuff. Uh, this way you can keep your pulls pretty clean and stuff. So you just you just pull them all once they're gathered, get roll behind them, get back attacks. If you have BSR, dump it as you get it and just try to get those 10 kills. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is pretty simple to do. There's quite a few Shadow Wolves here. Now, over here are the other Shadow Lions I was talking about, but it's a limited amount, so you'll probably not over clear them. The other spot is better. But yeah, these are all the Shadow Wolves. There's some Rhinos on the left side there, but that's pretty much it. The only downside with hunting on this side of the river is that there are these little grass beetles throughout uh, scattered throughout the spot so you just want to be mindful of them uh so that you're not hitting them like the one right here you just sneaking around there but for whatever reason they're like magnets for our match locks they always seem to go and target those little bastards like look at him so especially when i'm doing deer i tend to shoot them all the time which is annoying but yeah just keep keep an eye out for them don't get too lax where you accidentally start shooting those that's the loss in dps and money per hour the final spot I want to show you guys is the Frost Wolves. It is directly southwest of Shrine of Silent Prayers. To get the actual location, you can find it over here. So once you're here, you'll notice uh, among the Frost Wolves, there are bears. They're called winter bears. They look like big ass polar bears. So they're part of the rotation as well and add to your money per hour. So make sure you kill them. But there's a bunch of them here. Kill them in a similar fashion to the Shadow Wolves. And there's going to be about two bear spawns, I believe. But yep, yeah, pretty straightforward. Decent money. Decent option to kill. But use the calculator and find out which is the most profitable area for you. And also, you have to decide based on your energy consumption. So... Do you want to stay at a spot for many hours without having to worry about energy pots or using energy pots? Or do you just want to dump your energy as quick as possible and make the most money out of it? So all of those factors will go into consideration when you're deciding where you want to hunt for money. Section 5 Tips and Tricks all right, folks, in this section, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks that I've compiled from my many hours of experience hunting. And these are designed to help you be more efficient while hunting and make it easier for you. So they're all really useful. So make sure you check them out. Let's get started. The first one is how to reload while running. And I don't mean the slow run you do while you're actually reloading like this and holding down RB and going forward, but running at full speed in a sprint. So let me show you. The reason why you need to do this is when you're going between pack to pack, you want to maximize your speed and that'll increase your overall kills per hour because you spend less time running in a slow manner. So when you're running in a sprint mode, you're going pretty quick, right? So the way to do a reload while sprinting is you hit R and B, then you hold shift and hold W to start the sprint. So when you hit R and B, you just tap it once and let go like this. And that's how you reload while you're running at full speed. It's really important that you make your route through all of the mobs uh, as efficient as possible. Now, let me show you with a controller really quick. All right, for any controller players out there, it's really easy to do. All you do is hit right trigger for reload, hold down left trigger as shift, and press forward to sprint forward, okay? So it's the same concept as with keyboard. Tap it once and run forward. Alright guys, one thing to remember about this technique, it won't work if you're in a shooting stance. So, if you shoot once, you see the sparks flying out like right now and you can't move the camera all the way. 
you have to cancel out this stance in order to be able to do the reload technique. If I try it right now, see, I get the slow reload. So in order to cancel it out, all you have to do is either dodge roll or just move. Just tap W once and boom, you're out of the stance, right? So once again, you're in a shooting stance, cancel it out. Now you can do the reload technique or, you know, every time after you uh, loot a body or butcher a body, you know, take your loot, click it, do the moving reload, and then you walk. Or like every time you butcher a mob, so just pick up your loot and then do the moving reload right after because it'll always put you in a standby stance as soon as you're done uh, butchering the mob. Now tip number two ties in with tip number one. Uh, it's basically to do the moving reload technique while in between two mobs. Like you're trying to uh, butcher this one, then you're gonna go to this one. Just go ahead and butcher this and in between, you know, just activate that moving reload while you're moving and it'll save you some time overall. All right, tip number three. So whenever you're hunting, say, Narcion's uh, for deer deer, you might run into herbs like this and it's annoying because if you hit R, you accidentally start gathering it, right? Uh, you don't want to do that. So how you avoid this is instead of using a tool bag, uh, you want to equip the butcher knife directly. So what this does, it it cancels out the hoe function here. So then you can use F5 to cycle the options. When it's at uh, barehanded, it'll really quickly pick these up, especially if you have your uh, gathering buff like that. So it's really quick and you might waste energy doing that, fill up your inventory with nonsense. So by not equipping the tool bag, you can cycle it to the hoe gathering and no matter how much you press R, you're not going to click it. So. That way you can avoid gathering herbs and stick to just your hunting mobs. All right, tip number four is how to use other gear in between of your hunting uh, just to maximize your DPS. So by other gear, I mainly mean the Kaya necklace. So uh, this gives 10% extra back attack damage. It's a small percentage in the grand scheme of it, but if you're going full sweaty and you're trying to maximize kills per hour, it really does help to have that extra 10%. It could be the difference between one-shotting a deer or two-shotting it. So it's definitely nice to make use of. And for this, I like to use the Marco's gear bag. So in here, important things to put in is obviously the Kaya necklace. And the next one is the Mano's Red Coral Belt. It, this is what I use. So whenever you're using a gear switch, what it does is it removes your BSR. So Let's say I was to, you know, hit this button. I lost all my BSR I had. And because of that, you want to make up for the missing attack speed and crit rate you get from the bonus quest. So this Hunter's Dawn buff, because if without the BSR, then going and killing the wolves is annoying and it's a waste of time when you're trying to go sweaty and maximize uh, one rotation. So overall, in order to hit that five attack and five crit, you have two options. You have to use the blue elixir or the green ones. And if you use the green ones, this is what you got to do. How you actually use the gear switching is like this. Whenever you're looking to DPS the mobs and kill them, you know, you switch to your Kaya necklace. So you have the additional DPS. Now, when you're about to loot it, you know, you switch back. Now, the problem with using uh, Marco's gear bag is you have to be standing still in order to switch. So, you know, keep it, keep this in mind because you're losing out on mastery when you have the Kaya necklace equipped. That's money loss. So, you know, if you're trying to increase your DPS to make more money and you're accidentally gathering without uh, switching back to Manos, then that's a problem, right? So just keep that in mind. So this is how you use gear switching to maximize DPS while hunting. Now, this really comes into play when you're doing like shadow lines or something, you know, kill them as fast as possible. And with classes like, for example, I've seen a clip of a Musa going pretty sweaty and crazy and killing them really quickly with maximum buffs and self buffs and stuff. So you know, there's a lot of things you can do. And also uh, by switching to regular gear, you can even put in your weapon in there. So for example, let me do that right now. So in here, I'm gonna put in a couple weapons. The reason is now I am i don't have the musket, I can use my class's general mobility skills to get from pack to pack. So. This really comes into play at like, for example, Shadow Lions, uh, as I said just now, because the packs are spread apart. When you're running in between, you can use your class's normal skills to get there. 
All right, tip number five. Now, as I mentioned in tip number four, uh, you can't switch while you're moving. You have to be standing perfectly still. And that can be a bit of an uh, issue. And especially if you're in like a fighting stance with your gear out, uh, then you can't switch your gear at all. So you have to go back into standby, stand still, and then switch. So this can be a bit annoying. And the only item that really increases your DPS is obviously the Kaya's necklace. Now, the others are nice, too, for the reasons I mentioned before. But let's say you only want to use this. So how you do it is you put the Kaya's necklace on your hotbar. You put Mano's necklace on the hotbar. Even while you're running around and stuff, you can click uh, the Kaya's necklace or the Mano's and it'll instantly switch. Whereas the Marco's gear bag, you can't use it while running. You have to be standing still. So this will give you a bit more flexibility whenever you're at like a place like deer where you just need that extra 10% to be able to kill the deer uh, more efficiently and in one shot more often where you don't need the full array of benefits you get from using the Marco's gear bag and doing a full gear switch. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Hopefully that's uh, helpful for you guys. Tip number six. Tip number six is manipulating your mastery to match the bracket that you're at. So for example, the brackets closest to me are 1700 and 1650. There's no buffs available right now for me to push this to 1700. So because of that, there's 25 wasted mastery here. Now, in addition, if you were, let's say, a 1640 mastery, then you can push it up by 10 mastery and get to the next bracket, right? So for that, you want to use your mastery elixirs. So there are two elixirs of mastery. There are the blue variants, which are really expensive right now, but also the uh, green variants, which are much cheaper. And this is 10 mastery, this is 15 mastery, and it'll constantly take down your MP and SP. In gathering, that can uh, really affect your class because you're using your regular class skills to get from pack to pack and for mobility and stuff. Whereas in hunting, you don't use any of your class skills or SP or MP at all. So there's no harm in letting it tick down all the way to zero and keeping it that way and just using these elixirs uh, for the mastery buff. All right, tip number seven. This has to do with the gear bag again, but we're going to use it a bit differently. So let's say we're using our Kaya's necklace um, on the hot bar to switch back and forth between Manos and Kaya's. So you don't need the gear bag, right? Well, there is one more use for the gear bag. You see these little assholes over here. These are the uh, bush ticket beetles, and you tend to shoot them every once in a while. Even if your crosshair is targeted square on the deer, for whatever reason, it just like a magnet just flies onto the beetle and shoots that instead. It's so annoying. And you'll eventually have these guys attacking you, which can, you know, sometimes get annoying. So by using the gear bag to do an AP gear switch, um, you can actually use that to eliminate it. Now, this isn't something I would recommend, but if you're already switching gear, you're already losing BSR. And if you ever need to kill these because there's too many of them and they're getting in the way of your shots, that's an option. <laughs> Tip number eight is your character height. Yes. I, I, I'm being serious. Yes, character height as in how tall your character is by all means, even the body length like this and the height you get from that. So being taller makes you a bit more accurate with your shots. You'll see if your character is short, it'll suddenly miss shot. Even if you hit the mob square in the face, right? Which you don't want. You don't want you. That's a loss in DPS and you don't want that to happen. So by actually increasing the height of your character that does help with that and also characters below level 50 will also miss more often so just keep that in mind so what i did is i have two presets this is my normal preset and i have a hunting swap which uh well let me just show you look here boys this is peak hunting performance this is the ideal body type for hunting notice the difference <laughs> <laughs> absolutely jacked and as tall as freaking possible maxed out all the sliders in height now we are ready to bring on the pain tip number nine this is something we went over earlier in the guide already but once again i want to reiterate that you should always start off your hunting session with the buff or at least pick up the quest here uh your daily quest for hunting uh by picking this up you can immediately start off with the hunter's dawn buff after you turn it in so you know you hunt for a little bit then you can immediately turn it in in case you don't get the drop from one of the mobs so this is just basically a safeguard 
Tip number 10 is to use click to gather while hunting. Now it can get annoying with the deer, but at least other spots like rhinos, it's really easy to do. All you do is enable click to move. You hover your mouse over the body and you see it snap to the corpse right here and it highlights it, right? Right click. As soon as you see this interface, you can hit this hotkey and it will gather from a distance. So you can immediately uh, gather that and have the next one ready and gather the next one and it'll save you time running between corpse to corpse and this will decrease the amount of time you have between gather so you can spend more time hunting and it'll increase your efficiency overall making you more money in order to enable mouse to move you go to your settings go to interface settings go to mouse interface down here it says mouse to move you just enable this then whenever you activate your mouse by hitting control You'll see this cursor and you can move around with it by holding down LMB, but most importantly is how I showed you to gather bodies. This is useful while doing the regular gathering as well and pretty much a must have on PC. Tip number 11 is to hotkey your tent so you don't have to constantly click with your mouse. So you do this by um, just hover your mouse over it, you'll see the instructions. Press Alt and LMB and you'll be able to assign a key to it. So. By doing that, you'll be able to hotkey it and bring it out a lot quicker. And that also goes for your pets. You can hover your mouse over it and press Alt plus LMB on any of these icons and you can hotkey it. So if I want my life skilling pets out, I can hotkey that. If I want to put away my pets, I can hotkey that. So it'll save you time in the long run, even though it's very minuscule, it's nice to have. Tip number 12, you can use multiple alchemy stones. So you can't use the buff of two of the same type. Like you can't use the buff of two life skill alchemy stones. You can't have both the Stella Spirit Stone and the Khan's Heart active at the same time, but you can have the effect of Stella Spirit Stone and the Destruction Spirit Stone. You can pop the Destruction Spirit Stone and swap to the Khan's Heart for the passive mastery buff. So for example, I put them on my hotbar. This is the easiest way to pop them all. So I'm gonna switch to Trent's tier and I'm going to hit you to pop it. We got the Trent's tier active. Then I'm going to switch to the Destruction Spirit Stone and activate that. And then I'm going to equip the Khan's Heart for the Mastery buff. So I'm going to hit four and boom. See, I have the XP bonus and the on use effect from Trent's tier. I still have my Combat Alchemy Stone active and I equip my Khan's Heart for the 25 Mastery passive. Tip number 13. You can actually get two attack speed from the main story quest line costume reward, which uh, it rewards you multiple sets throughout the whole main story quest line as you finish it. So for example, the Honor Hercules Might costume set, it gives you two attack speed with the four set effect. So as you can see here, um, two attack speed. So you can also use this to fill in the gap in your buff rotation. You do miss out on using the hunting costume though, but if you're a free to play player or if you don't have the hunting costume at all, then <laughs> you might as well use this, right? Tip number 15, you might have difficulty while hunting to see what's behind a bush or foliage like this and end up tilting your camera angle down. Instead, you could just raise your camera height by holding the up arrow key on your keyboard a little bit. That'll give you a bit better visibility of the terrain and the grind spot. And my last and final tip, guys, is definitely consider farming the infinite potions. They'll serve you really well in the grand scheme of BDO throughout your BDO career, whether it's grinding or life skilling, because you can go to the desert and never have to worry about the desert debuff. And it's just really nice to have. I know it's a long term goal, so take your time with it. Check out my discord for the rare treasure items, BDO rares. I'll link it in the description down below. And yeah, make use of that and try to farm these out. Eventually you'll get it. And a quick tip about the infinite HP potion, you don't have to have the full HP potion for it to be viable. You could have a mini pot and it could be more than enough while hunting. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to go get all of the three pieces. You could just get one, make one of the smaller variants and still be good. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope this information aids you in your journey to make some gains in BDO and start out hunting or improve your hunting. This took a lot of time and effort. I had to redo it because there were a few mistakes in the first guide and video was updated and we got the trends tier and a few other things had to change. And I changed the structure of the video as well, but I hope it paid off. I hope it helps out some people out there and that's all that really matters to me. 
Please do like and subscribe if you did find this helpful. Leave a comment. Hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy. And if you are swiping acorns, yo, hit up that code Pansy and support your boy. I no secrets here. I tried to pour my heart and soul into this guide and tried to make it as easy to understand as possible. I did leave out some super advanced tips and tricks, but those can come in a later video. Right now, I felt like that would be way too much and information overload. But yeah, guys, I hope you found it helpful. I really do. And if you need any recommendations, if you haven't seen my previous two hunting guides, the part one, which goes over the basics and part two, which goes over the leveling, the links are in the description down below. Please do check them out. I hope you found them helpful as well. And that's it for today. Take it easy, guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.